This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com. And today I want to talk about acceleration and weight transfer. And this will be specifically for drag race cars. So we're only talking acceleration in one direction. I want to define 1G is the acceleration that is the same as Earth's gravity. That works out to being equal to 32.2 feet per second every second. Or if you want to think in SI units, it's 9.8 meters per second every second acceleration. If you can average 1G for five seconds, that works out to right at zero to 161 mile an hour in that same five seconds. And I want to point out, it'll become quite apparent that with acceleration, weight moves around the car. Here's your basic car. Every car has what's known as the center of gravity. This one's drawn a little far forward compared to where it normally would be. But what this is, is if you were to pick up the car with a chain hoist of some sort, and you could hook right at the center of gravity, that car would remain balanced no matter what position you put it in. As a car accelerates away from the line, normally the front will start to pick up, extend on the shocks and springs, and you can see that the center of gravity will come up a little bit, maybe a couple inches. This happens to be drawn at about two degrees. Now what I've done is redrawn it at 15 degrees angle to the horizon. And you can see how the CG height has changed about 18 inches in this position. We'll see why that's so important later. You'll also notice that the center of gravity will come up at an arc that is centered about the rear tire patch. The forces of a car accelerating can be actually broken down into two vectors. What is the gravity vector? And the second one is the horizontal force vector from acceleration. This seems a little counterintuitive in that it's pointing to the back. And in reality, we also have a force that's equal and opposite pushing this direction on the bottom of the tire. But for our purposes, we are going to draw it to the back. And the reason is, it's these two forces that add up to the total force vector, which is coming down at an angle. Wherever that red line goes through the ground, that will give you your new center of gravity of the car as the tires know it. It turns up that this red vector would be straight down when the car is sitting still. Fairly hard acceleration would maybe bring it to, say, 18 inches in front of the rear tire patch. But at this point, you're still traction limited. And if you should get this vector all the way up, to the rear tire patch, that's when the car is wheelie limited. So this vector can go through the ground anywhere in this blue area. You can never get out of that area, at least while you're accelerating. Now I've just added in the angle that's the maximum that force vector can be at. So now if we have a car that's accelerating and accelerating fairly hard, the Vector is shown drawing through the rear tire, and the car is wanting to, to wheelie at this point. The easiest thing to do to cure this, everybody knows you could add weight to the front of the car. I've drawn it in blue. That weight time will create a force that is parallel to the original force. Coming down 90 degrees to the rear tire will be your distance and torque is equal to force times the distance, and that will pull the front of the car down. If we had a car that wanted to not transfer all the weight to the rear, what we might want to do is add some weight at the rear of the car up high. What that does is gives us the same force as the previous drawing, but the distance is in the opposite direction, and that will tend to make the car more prone to wheelies. So let's say we had several positions that we could put that weight. And I've got one up high near the trunk lid, one way up high on the roll cage, and one in the nose. All three of those positions may be where you'd want to put it to tune the car. 
Each one of them will have exactly the same force vector, provided they're all the same weight. And all those vectors will be on lines parallel to the original force vector. And this one will act through this distance. This weight will act through a distance from here to the bottom of the tire. And the one on the top would be from its parallel line down to the tire. So each one will have a different effect wanting to hold the car down or pick it up. All I've done now is just added a green line. And I want to note that anywhere above the green line that you put the weight, i.e. anywhere in this pink area, that will have a torque attempting to pull the front end of the car up. And if you go anywhere in the yellow area, there's a torque or a couple to bring the front end down. If you notice, I've got an area that's not been highlighted. The way the math works, if you add weight anywhere along this red line, it will have no effect on how the car feels as it's starting to pull the front end up. But initial bite will have more effect if you've got weight on the rear of the car to add weight to the rear tire on an initial hole shot. So now what I'm going to do is show you how fast this really happens. As the car is sitting at the lights, sitting still, possibly on the trans brake, all force is straight down, both the weight vector and the total vector and the total force vector. As the car begins to come out of the hole, weight begins to transfer back and you can see the green line start to grow. This is at about 50 thousandths of a second out of the hole on a fast car. As the car begins to move, you're only talking tenths of an inches or 50 thousandths of a second where you're starting to get some pretty significant acceleration. The track timers probably don't even realize the car has started to move at this point. And you can see that the force vector is starting to get closer to the rear tires. The car is actually putting more than 50% of the weight on the rear tires. Now we're about two tenths of a second out of the hole or 200 thousandths of a second. The car's only moved approximately six inches, probably is not even out of the front lights yet. And you can see that the green force vector is really starting to grow. We're almost have 100% of the weight on the rear tires, we're probably at 85, 90% of the weight on the rear tires based on where the line, where the red line is going through the ground. This is drawn as the car is just starting to skim the front tires off the ground. The front suspension is fully extended. Notice that the vertical weight vector is still the same length. The car still weighs the same. The red line can only get as high as the bottom of the rear tire. So that drives the length of the acceleration vector or the force vector. That's about as big as you can get on any one car. Now, if the car starts to wheelie, the red line still has to go through the bottom of the tire. The weight vector is still the same length as it ever was. Again, the car hasn't changed weight at all. So notice how short the force vector is starting to get. If you attempt to put any more power than it takes to accelerate the car that hard, it will only make the car rise faster and harder. So all of a sudden you can see why a wheeling car can get very unstable, especially if you can't get out of the power fast enough. That's where EFI tuning becomes very critical. If you think about it on a drag race motorcycle, they have the ability to actually get all the way up on the rear tire and you would have essentially a zero length force vector. So the car is extremely unstable or the motorcycle is extremely unstable at that point. Here's the math you can look through if you want. Uh, you can hit the pause button. I'm not gonna go through all of this, but basically from physics, F equals MA, which is force equals mass times acceleration. And what you have is the coefficient of friction. And you can read down through all of this by hitting the pause button. But the big take home is this is about 90% of the acceleration story on drag race cars. Suspension settings with shocks and springs, suspension geometry, all the rest of that sort of thing. 
is about the other five or 10 percent. As a conclusion, I just want to point out that if you want to tune any drag race car, you need the ability to tune the weight transfer and power delivery as the track conditions change. I will demonstrate in a later video how all of this can be seen in Mega Log Viewer HD, even between rounds. I want to thank my friends at TunerStudio.com. These are the developers of Mega Log Viewer HD that I use to do analyze almost all of these EFI systems. And if you should have the desire to help me stay motivated, you can always donate to the cause at paypal.me slash how EFI works. Thank you for watching.